In Sweet Home, you have five people in your party, each with their own special item. I think some are stronger than others, but I went through the whole game without ever really worrying about it. What's far more important are the special items, because the mansion is littered top to bottom with hazards and puzzles. Locked doors need keys, debris needs to be cleared, and of course, frescoes need to be preserved. Furthermore, there's a ton of extra items that anyone can pick up and swap. Planks of wood to cross over chasms with, oh buddy, watch your step, candles to aid you in the dark, gloves that help you crawl through thorny bushes, and so on. But as I'm sure you've noticed, you can't travel with all five members at once. The most your party can hold is three. You not only need to manage your items, but also two separate parties. Which means you've got to decide which two are traveling alone. And there's no real right combination either. Should the photographer stick with the key holder since many of the frescoes are behind locked doors? Or since there's so many locked doors, should the key holder stick with the medic just in case they get poisoned or cursed? But sometimes the frescoes are covered in dust and can't be photographed. So should the photographer stick with the vacuum guy. If you change your mind, you can change your party, just as easy as you swap items. Ah, crap, I need a rope. Now who did I leave that with? Ah, damn it, I left it with those guys, and they're downstairs. It's a remarkable amount of strategy for an NES game. But let's not forget that Sweet Home is primarily an RPG, but damn it, it nails that too. It's sad to say that even though Final Fantasy and Dragon Warrior are two of the most important RPGs ever made, they sure as hell are boring, aren't they? All that grinding? I don't know how the hell I played these games as a kid. Yes, they're classics, but man did these games age poorly. But just like with Earthbound, Sweet Home deviates from many typical RPG conventions, making it the best aged turn-based RPG on the system. Sweet Home takes place in a haunted mansion. This of course means there are no towns. Progress is never impeded because you need to tread back to town to rest up at the inn. And don't expect any safe rooms or magical warps either. You are stuck in that mansion. But this means a number of things. One, no talking to the king to record your progress. You can save anytime, anywhere. Two, the game is therefore pretty much always moving forward, which makes it addicting. Three, no weapon shops. All weapons are found lying around the mansion. And since there's no shopping to be done, four, enemies don't give you money, just experience. So five, if you're going to grind, it's just to raise your levels. Now it is important you keep on that grind, but with no ends, how are you supposed to heal? Tonics are found throughout the mansion, and they instantly heal everyone in your party 100% regardless of your levels. That may sound a little too convenient, but remember, you can't buy tonics. You have to ration the handful littered throughout the mansion. There's that item management again. But if this sounds like a deal breaker, don't worry. To be honest, I was never sweating over tonics. Another great thing about Sweet Home is how it streamlines the random battles. Battles are typically quick because you never fight more than one enemy. Another subtle thing is there's no death animation or fanfare for winning a battle. Once your foe has been vanquished, the text announces you've earned this much experience and boom, you're back on the overworld. Like all old school RPGs, Sweet Home suffers from random battle syndrome, but it does a damn good job of making this staple of the genre as painless as possible. Now just because you never fight more than one enemy at a time, doesn't mean you should ever have a party member travel alone. Throughout the game, increasing more so as you progress, enemies love to poison and curse party members. Early on, enemies will stun a party member, and though this doesn't affect them after battle, during battle their health quickly depletes. Later enemies will curse and poison, which depending on the creature, will either paralyze you during or sometimes after battle. Either way, if you don't treat their illness quickly, they'll be dead in no time. Nah, but what's the big deal? If they die, just bring them back with a phoenix down or something, right? No problem, right? Wrong. If a party member dies, they're dead. For good. You cannot bring them back. And their special item? Also gone. Sweet Home doesn't fuck around. Hope you got an empty slot to carry the replacement item. It is very important you stick together and keep your medic nearby. Also, if your medic becomes cursed, any character can run up and use her med pack on her, which is some smart programming by Capcom. So watch your party's HP closely, but remember, there's only so many tonics to go around. But this tendency to curse and poison can work in your favor. Let's say you get into a fight and the enemy is only able to attack once before you clobber them. And if all they do is curse you, it's no big deal if you got your medic around. Just heal them as soon as the curse sets in and everything goes back to good. Nobody loses any HP and it's like the fight never happened. So stay sharp and you should be ready for when the unexpected happens. Because there's more than just random battles to contend with. Oh yes, this house is alive and it's hungry. Collapsing floors? Check. Sticky floors? Check. Ice pits? 
Check. Water traps? Check. Fire traps? Check. Possessed chairs, knives, statues, chandeliers? Check. And probably the biggest threat, lost souls that'll snatch up a party member and place them somewhere else in the mansion. Later in the game, enemies start doing this in the midst of battle, which really fucks with your plans. Did I mention you can save anytime, anywhere, and you should save often? So let's recap. You've got to deal with managing your party, managing your items, especially tonics, be ready for poison and curses, as well as random battles and a bevy of traps and hazards. In a nutshell, take Final Fantasy or Dragon Warrior, streamline random battles, trim the grinding way down, add puzzles, hazards, and traps, and replace weapon and armor customization with party and item management, and suddenly you have a 20-year-old RPG that is never boring. Wrap it all together in a dark, sometimes genuinely scary atmosphere, and you've got a goddamn classic. An absolute must-play. Technically speaking, Sweet Home is also an excellent title. The graphics are top-notch for an NES game from 1989. The many monsters are all disgustingly detailed. Mr. Grasping Hands and Vomiting Head gets me every time. Ugh, get it off. And if you read the description, these guys poison you by squirting you with pus from the many pimples that cover their bodies. That is awesome and fucking gross. The menu system is a little clunky, but it's something you get used to. Considering how complex all the customization is, it could have been a lot worse. Hey, this game is 20 years old. Set your standards accordingly. The soundtrack is excellent, though not really catchy or melodic. Now in the past, I've held a lack of melody against a game, but the music here expertly complements the mood and atmosphere of the Haunted Mansion, which is exactly what it needed to do. Maybe not iPod-worthy like most other Capcom titles, but it understands its role in a game like this. I've used a lot of hyperbole in talking about Sweet Home, but I'll admit, I really have no idea if this game truly is the most graphic or gory game on the NES, because technically it's a Japanese Famicom game. I have never been, nor do I have any interest in the import scene. There are probably a couple hundred Famicom games that were never released in America, so it's fair to say that there may be an even more obscure Famicom game that's way more violent and grim than Sweet Home. So let me save myself a few dozen emails by saying, this was just a gift from a friend and I have no interest in reviewing other reproduction carts or import games. I've got my hands full enough with domestic games. This was just a one-off kind of deal. And now, I am officially done with Halloween, so, back by popular demand, more hilarious Halloween jokes! Let's see. And yes, I am going to review the Splatterhouse remake, as if there was any doubt.